Olá, sejam bem-vindos, uh, sejam muito bem-vindos a mais uma conversa de liderança, sobre liderança. E hoje eu vou mudar para inglês, está bem? Porque a nossa convidada fala inglês e terei muito gosto em recebê-la aqui na nossa casa. So, welcome everyone, it's an immense pleasure to have you all with us today here at the House of Women Leadership, of Female Leadership in Angola. It's a pleasure to um, have this conversation will be done in English because we have our invitee of today, uh, Bonnie Fatio. She speaks English, so that allows me also to um, explore a little more further and getting outside of Lusofnia. That is always amazing. So for who doesn't know us very well, um, Liderança Feminina em Angola, a female leadership in Angola has almost five years. So it was founded in uh, February, 9 of February. Um, and we aim to give and raise voice of women. And we do that by empowering and leverage uh, female leaders. You know, the numbers are not our friends, okay? So that's why we encourage everyone to follow us and to raise their voices and to be together because this is not a matter of a problem of women, but this is also men's. Um, and we have to be together in order to make the difference that is necessary to achieve what is the equity, the gender diversity, and to be aligned with the fifth ODS, uh, that is uh, gender equality. Without that, we'll still be, we are going to still very, very behind. So that is our goal with female leadership in Angola, empowering women, giving, raising voice, but also connecting, having strong relations, developing. Uh, and we do that with some of our projects of social responsibility, like the um, scholarships we have with scholarship Irmelinda that we will have for this year, we hope 36 new scholarships um, given here in Angola. That's amazing because we have people that uh, support us. And this is a partnership of female leadership in Angola with uh, Bikushima and uh, Spas Lodge. So only together we can achieve more and we also empower women through programs of coaching. So that is what we do. This is just a little of what we do. And for today, conversations, this house, um, we love to have conversations about the lives of our guests where they will talk about real life, real challenge their adventures, their success, their success, and give us here another vision about how they raised their own voice. So for today, I will be talking with Bonnie Fatio that I invite to join me. <laughs> welcome, Bonnie. Welcome to the House of Female Leadership in Angola. It's, oh, thank uh, you, Eva Rosa. Many you know how much we're aligned in our thinking and how much I admire what you're doing. Congratulations, truly. Well, it's it's mutual because uh, I, I was going to tell how I met you, but let, let us give us... Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, 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 let's talk that a little uh, further. But I had the opportunity to meet uh, Bonio also with uh, her own program of Inspire Women Lead. But we'll be talking about that. But um, for starting our conversation, Bonnie, usually I, I, I love to ask to my guests, uh, who is Bonnie Fatio? Can you share a little about your story? Do you know, if the truth be known, I'm still kind of that little blonde barefoot tomboy playing <laughs> <laughs> outside. Um, I, I, I just have that playful spontaneity that is such a piece of me. Do you know, I, I was very privileged 
because as a child, we we were very, I came from a very modest home as far as um, income is concerned. But we had values and we had love and family ethics and learning what respect was about. And each of my parents and my grandparents and my aunts and uncles were such role models. And my father was a Methodist minister. Um, that's one of the, the, the Protestant churches. And so we moved every four years, which also meant that I was very used to meeting new people, getting involved. And as we, as we continued to move, it, it just was natural to immediately try to become part of the community that we moved into. And I think what, what really has been of greatest value to me over the years is the fact that since my father was a, one of the distinguished leaders, um, just because of who, who, he, who he was as far as his role in the community, it also meant that I grew up feeling comfortable in any situation with anybody. It, more comfortable in some than others. <laughs> um, however, it made a difference because I might help my father deliver food to a family who had nothing. And when we got home, get dressed up because we were invited to the mayor's for dinner. So there, there was kind of this expanse of role models, being able to see people, realizing the value of the individual. And I think that's something that is so precious. There also was a work ethic. Um, as soon as, I, well, when I was 10 years old, I was already having had a regular babysitting job. And that may not sound like much, but for a little 10 year old to have that responsibility, oh, that was major for me. And um, when I went to university, I worked my way through university. And that meant, and, and this may not sound important to you, but I think it is. It meant that I worked in all kinds of positions that I would not ever work in at any other time. I, I waited tables, I was a telephonist, I, I was a model, I, um, I was a secretary, I, I did everything um, that came my way in order to pay my studies. And all of this, I think, brings a lot to who I am. Because when I met this debonair, debonair Swiss fellow, my junior year um, at university, I didn't hesitate to just move to another country, to a new culture. Um, I knew I could do it. And although it was not an easy transition, um, and we did not get married immediately, I knew him three years before we got married, but um, moving to a new country, a new culture where I did not know the language, I did not know the culture, and I was kind of thrown into it by choice, also has a lot to do with who I am today. Because Geneva, Switzerland, which is where I live, is a land of opportunity for anybody who's really interested in learning about the international um, world. We have most of the agencies of the United Nations based here in Geneva, as well as a lot of the, the meetings of the United Nations, as well as the local community. And when you put those two together, it's something very special. Plus the fact I'm very spontaneous. You probably have noticed that on occasion. And this is a very conservative um community, society. So I've always stood out, <laughs> I think it's easy to say, which is my advantage. Um, it's because of that that I've 
stepped into all kinds of leadership positions here parallel to my career that have led me to what I'm doing today and has brought me really in close contact with some amazing, amazing role models. And I'm thinking of people like um, Madam Ogata, who is the High Commissioner for Refugees, um, tiny little Japanese woman who just knew how to move forward in any situation, it seemed to me, from where I saw her. Uh, Masimbi Kenyoro, who was the head of the World YWCA and later became president and CEO of the Global Fund for Women. And Kofi Annan, who is somebody, all three of these people who are leaders that I've admired, as well as one of our American ambassadors, George Moose, and I bring him in too, because all four of these leaders have something that I've always wanted. And that is to be able to lead and to lead with goodness. Knowing, you know, there are times we can't always do what we want. And yet when it comes to the values and the ethics, and that's what I call goodness, these people our front row as far as showing, not, not telling, but showing what can be done and how it can be done. And if the truth be known, my father was also a person like that who, who led with his values. He didn't have some of the finesse maybe <laughs> in expressing them to people who didn't agree, but... <laughs> um, as was my mother. So I think as we move into our conversation today, something that's very important, especially as we talk about authentic feminine leadership and the leadership we want to see in the world, that we want to be in the world, I'd like us to keep this, this concept and this feeling and this word goodness because it's not easy to always lead with goodness and with your values. And I think it's something that authentic feminine leadership will help to bring. And I think it will also then, by exposing this authenticity and wanting to make a difference while thinking of what impact it will have on others, there are going to be an awful lot of men who are going to step forward and say, let's go, because I know they want it to, and I know they have it. It's just that in the, the, the world that we've been living in, men haven't had a chance to be authentic. Everybody's been kind of told to, and I exaggerate, of course, but everybody's been told to fit into a mold. I used to wear kind of a, like a pinstriped suit um, to go to work and felt good in it because that's what everybody else was in at the time. Whereas today, you won't catch me in anything that I don't feel good in, which is why I'm in this blue today. So as we move into this conversation, I think that's an important element for us to also um, Keep in mind as we discuss. Well, I, I just loving to listen to you. So, Bonnie, thank you for sharing a little about your stories and uh, and you have talk talk share with us authentic feminine leadership. And I know because I was with you in Inspire Women Leads. I'm still <laughs> so I still feel a part of it. And it had made a huge impact in me, as you know. And I still have my growing to my vision here from 20, the 15th of November of 2021. So wow. that was when I, I finished my program with you. So one year program. Um, 
And two years later, here we are on the 24th uh, of November of 2023. And um, Inspire Women Lead has bring me a lot. And for who doesn't know, uh, because uh, for me, Inspire Women Lead, Bonnie, Authentic Leadership, they are all connected. So that's why I'm bringing this to this conversation. Uh, Bonnie, please share a little um, your your association in Inspire Women Lead with us. I'd love to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> First we have. <laughs> uh, enthusiasm can get carried away. <laughs> Um, I launched Inspired Women Lead in 2016 with a vision, and that is a vision of a world of peace, understanding, and collaboration, where each individual is valued and respected for her or his uniqueness. And for that to happen, <laughs> I'm still convinced, and I certainly was already convinced back then, for this to happen, we must have women leading in all areas around the globe. And this isn't to push out men. No, never, ever, ever. This is to be the complement that we're meant to be to the type of leadership that is out there today, which is why I call it authentic feminine leadership. Because the world needs some kind of a, uh, what shall I say, a count, not a counterbalance, well, a counterpart, yes, to, to, to be able to take what's wonderful about what's happening in the world today and to bring other elements to it so that it becomes something even richer, something more harmonious for everybody. And I, I, well, let me, let me say it was started in 2016 and I began it by mentoring 10 women from nine different countries because what was important to me is that this be truly global. And that isn't, I mean, I could, I could have a hundred nationalities right here in Geneva. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about having women in their countries mentoring other women who are in their countries so that it's cross-border, cross-cultural, cross-sector, cross-generational as much as possible. And something, um, we'll come back to maybe the structure later because I, I, I think it's important to also realize that by being mentored by somebody who's very different from you, you also think more deeply. There, there's a different depth to everything. And even I, even I, you know, I like to think I'm perfect. and I know I'm far, 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 far from it. Will find, oh, that's another hidden bias that's, jumping to the surface. I better take a moment to just digest this because we do have these biases where we want to be judgmental about something, but we catch ourselves realizing that this is a bias. And what's, what's also beautiful about working with somebody from a different country is we also learn so much about other cultures and certain ways that, and it's not just one part of the world when I'm saying this, certain ways that different people at different times realize they're privileged. They're privileged, babe. well, you and I, <laughs> as we started talking tonight, you're talking about how warm it is <laughs> as I'm here freezing. I might think you're privileged. Mm -hmm. This isn't necessarily the kind of privilege we'll talk about, but and and for instance, during COVID, um, learning that you know there are, there are many women in the program who to have enough water to wash their hands as often as you were supposed to, 
they just couldn't do it. We learned that a woman in another part of the world had a daughter. And if anything happened to her, there was nobody to take her daughter. I mean, we just learn how privileged we are to even have family. So there, there are lots, lots of kind of secondary, um, shall I say, um, advantages to working with women in different parts of the world, and especially realize, realizing how much we're together. So what happens is, and you'll, you can come in on this, Eva Rosa, because you know it from, from having been a mentee and then a mentor. The first six months, a woman is a mentee, and she meets with her mentor, who's very different from her, twice a month, for 45 minutes. And there is a robust program behind this. It's not just getting together and chatting as we are today. Because through directing sp specific questions around themes, the mentee really learns so much more about herself. And besides those two mentoring sessions every month, there also is a group call. There are several group calls, and Eva Rosa can tell you more because she actually leads one of the ones for the mentors. And then at the end of those six months, each woman becomes a mentor for another woman, yet again from another part of the world. And what's so beautiful here is anybody who's been involved in training or teaching will realize that if you want to instill something in yourself, if you want to really anchor it and have it be yours, the best way is to share it with somebody else. So the second part, you become a mentor and there is a full support behind that. You are trained to mentor on the mentoring um, calls, the, the group call, each month, you have a mentoring guide, and there is what we call your personal pair guide to follow your pair, the mentor and mentee. But why don't why don't you share, Eva Rosa? I mean, it's much more exciting coming from somebody who's been in the program. So I, I think first, please, if you do not know Inspire Women Lead, please follow it. They are here also in uh, LinkedIn and. Uh, Facebook. Um, so that will be one of my first uh, suggestions. And from my experience and from someone that really loves to uh, connect, engage, continuous development. Uh, and that's why when I'm still with a program and I'm still a mentor for other women also and uh, giving um, this part of how we can go further. And for me here is this, as Bunny already shared, authentic feminine leadership. And it was interesting because first time I had, I was, when I was mentee, I was putting oh, feminine leadership. No, we are all the same, feminine men. We have to think about leadership without gender, not feminine leadership, but leadership. And I'm here in the space also of women and female leadership. So... We, we must have to clarify that because in order to achieve that, we have to understand it. We have to understand that we are unique and um, our, our way of doing things is different. And I love the example that Bonnie gave earlier, that uh, then you have all that suit uh, just to be in, in the right way of, of presenting yourself to, the, to the, your work. But now you have that amazing blue, your scarf, your necklace, and you, oh, no, I love these colors. This is me. This is Bonnie. And this is feminine leadership. This is embracing ourselves. This is bringing this difference for everyone. So if you want to make this journey also, as I have done, and <laughs> for one year now, two years Past, I will be with my fourth uh, group of mentors. Um, 
just follow us because it's just only by invitation. It's not something you'll, you'll see it. And why am I saying this? Because this cultural diversity and be aware that um, all the challenge that we think we have sometimes are so small, but sometimes they are very, very big. So this is what I take from your uh, program, Bonnie, from Inspire Woman Lead. And I hope who will be interesting and will have that amazing experience for one year. So six years as a mentee, six years as a mentor. That is the, the giving uh, your time, giving your knowledge. Six uh, months. Six months. I said six years. Oh, my God. Not six years. <laughs> so otherwise, no one would come. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, probably, but we'll be a doctor. So six months, six months, it's one year program. So enjoy it. And you know, I'd, I'd like to quickly share a, a story because when you were talking about the authenticity and we're talking about the blue I'm wearing, one of the women that I mentored, and I won't say what business she's in because you, you might actually recognize. Um, but to me, I was feeling really honored to mentor this woman. She, she's phenomenal. And she was saying how she didn't have confidence. And she was supposed to be going to this major event, which she had already been to the previous year. And it was really important for the business she was in. And she said to me, you know, last year I went, nobody, nobody even wanted to talk to me. She said, and I was the only woman of color. And I said to her, because she's from one of the African countries, I said to her, this year, well, I asked her what she wore the year before. And she said, well, I wore, you know, an outfit to, to blend in. I said, this year, wear your native dress, your African dress from your country with all the color and flair and beauty that comes with that. And she did. And she said, Bonnie, everybody wanted to talk to me. It was amazing. I, I, didn't, I didn't have to seek people out. They came to me. And there's a lot to be said, I think, for us just feeling good about ourselves because we are showing up as who we are. And I, I'm not saying maybe every time we show up, we're going to, to dress in our, our, our native dress. Um, but at the same time, showing up so that we feel comfortable because we know who we are. And I, I, I've gotten into trouble a lot, I'll tell you, because I'm so spontaneous. <laughs> and I know when I'm right, even when I'm wrong. <laughs> Love M. And because of that, I accept it, you know, where others might cringe because they they did something along the lines of what I've done. I, I'll just give you one example. No, I won't. No, it's no, nope, please share. <laughs> share <it. laughs> please share it. <laughs> when I was in the Swiss government uh, on the, the city council, among the commissions I was on, I was on the one for sport and security. And as a result, I was able to go to the hockey matches and have good seats. And one of the um, important women here in, in Geneva said, oh, I've never been to a hockey game. I'll go with you if, if I can. And so I said, sure. So we went to a hockey game. And the people behind me were yelling something that didn't make sense to me at all. But I thought, that's okay. If that's what you yell here, that's what I'll yell. So here's Bonnie <laughs> representing the city government, yelling what they're yelling. No, I didn't quite yell what they yelled. I was yelling, back up, back up. Whereas they were pronouncing it slightly differently and they were basically saying, Mm, how can I put this gently? Mm, shove it up. You're behind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, 
that's just me blending in. <laughs> Somebody else would just cringe and die and never tell the story. And I, I think I need to write a book about all of these experiences. Because but you're, we but you're, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was I, I was going to use what you just said related to um, blending in and the book. You you also want to talk about more stories, but you already have a book. Would you like to share it as your book? Oh, I would love to. Um, <laughs> I just happen to have it in hand. <laughs> yeah, I have it online, so <laughs> but I will have it like a fire in her belly, transforming the world one one woman at a time. And what's beautiful is, you know, each woman who joins Inspired Women Lead, one of the criteria is to have a fire in your belly. And that's not acid indigestion. It means that you have a passion, you have some kind of a vision or a dream that you want to make happen. And it's something that's going to benefit others. Obviously, it always benefits us when we have a vision somehow. Part of a real vision, though, is it's going to also benefit others. So this is really about that. It's the fire in her belly. In this case, it's, it's, it's mine. It also features several of the women who have been through the program and shares what, what their fire has been and what's come of it. And I think it it would be interesting, well, just quickly to say this is on Amazon. Uh, it's priced as cheaply as possible, so as many people can get to it. There, um, and the Kindle version is um, also available. Eva Rosa, why don't you share your vision? Because you entered with a vision, and here you are. I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, yeah, but that is not the goal of these conversations. It's you, <laughs> right? But I'm, I mean, you're an you're an amazing woman. You're a role model. Let's let's just take a couple minutes here <laughs> to to talk. This is part of my authentic leadership. I like to <laughs> share it. Okay, okay. I wasn't expecting that, Bonnie, because it's the other way. I do the question <laughs> okay. and you are on the spotlight. <laughs> but uh, I, I, what I love and uh, what I do is to raise and give voice to women. And this is my contribution, is bringing women and men to share their stories here. For example, here in these conversations that we are having, you are my guest Number 101. We have done 101 conversation. How amazing is that? Bringing real stories, bringing all these amazing, have fun, crying, talking about serious topics, talking about uh, what is leadership for you, who inspires you. And for me, um, this is my vision. And I, I was... I still have it here when I, I write it because I'm listening. I'm looking there that that this way because it's it's here two years. Okay, since I, I have this office, I have put it here, and um, because my vision is to raise the voice of women mm -hmm. leaders, and so that is what I love to do. It's to it's 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 how amazing is that. <laughs> So it's what, it's what you're doing. And you are transforming the world one woman at a time with a fire in your belly. And this, this is what's so exciting to me because each, each woman in the program has that fire. Some, some of them, it's simmering. It hasn't really ignited yet. And that's okay. They know they're on the threshold of something. And what's beautiful is, you know, my vision, your vision, her vision, they're, they're all powerful. And then we come together and it's like, you know, a drop of water here and a drop of water there has suddenly become this thunderstorm, this, 
this tsunami, if you wish, in the end, of just authentic feminine leadership. And I loved earlier, too, that you, you mentioned that the, the feminine in it kind of raised a question for you. And I know it still does for a number of people. And yet, if we're talking about authentic leadership for women, we can't do it without the feminine. And the feminine for me is very different from the feminine for you or the, the one of somebody else. All we care about is that you identify with the fem feminine in some way, shape, or form. Because that brings a different element to leadership. And it's part of our authenticity. Less so for some, more so for others. Yeah. And, and you know, sometimes, and uh, probably you also have felt uh, that, because when we are trying to be as everyone, as you already shared, we are going to dress the same way. Um, and we are just one more. And then one day when we decide, as you share the example, just just go along, just be you, just bring yourself to it. And then suddenly you have, wow, an amazing and so different person because that person has, a, and I think that the transformation only happens when the person feels that her or his um, more strong side is when he believes in, in himself, mm -hmm. in her. So no matter what you say about me, this is me. This is the way I like. And uh, I will give you also an example what happened to me now is that I usually say with my gray hair, so sometimes I'm painting, right? So mm -hmm. now I can use it. Yeah, but there <laughs> it now. Sometimes I use it to say, now I, I, I'm using my, my sneakers because... Yeah, I like high heels, but I also like to be with my sneakers. And I will be with my 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 suit and with the sneakers. And everyone will, oh, Eva, you are amazing. And I say, yes, because I'm feeling amazing. Mm -hmm. And these are just small details that when we are so young, sometimes we do not think about them because we are thinking in other stuff. And that's okay. It's, it's, it's okay, but... The most important, and here there is no age, and you you also share that the importance of having these um, different uh, women, different ages, is that the sooner we understand this, the powerful we are. Mm. Indeed, no one teaches when you go to the school. No one teaches that you are amazing that uh, you can be a leader. And usually they tell us, oh, you cannot sit like that. You must do sit like this. You don't, cannot do that. Boys can do, but you cannot because you are a woman. But no one tells you, okay, you are amazing the way you are and you can be a leader. And so for being a leader, give, raise your voice, be strong on your voice, say what you feel, feel well, with yourself and I, I think that is the best part of the, the journey and the process. I agree with you wholeheartedly because when we feel good about ourselves, we feel good about everything. Yes. I think the, 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 the leaders that tend to be more um, the dictators or the manipulators are those who don't feel good about themselves. So it has to be about them because they haven't truly connected with themselves in a positive way yet. And do you know, you've mentioned men a couple of times. I, I, I'm just thinking the leaders that I highlighted when I talked yeah. at the beginning, yeah. each of them has a spouse who is supportive. And, you know, it used to be successful man, look for, you know, look for the woman behind him because every successful man has a, a woman behind him. And it's also true for the, for the women I mentioned. 
that they had a supportive husband. And I'd like to just use one one story because um, I, I know it personally. And that is Missimbi Kenyoho. She had just given, this is years ago, she'd recently given birth to a child and she was the keynote speaker at a major conference. So her, she and her husband and the baby went um, to the conference. They were met at the at the airport, and the it, it, it was Doctor Kenyorho. The first name wasn't she was Doctor Kenyorho, and they came rushing towards them to greet them. And of course, they went to her husband, and her husband said, "I think you're you're I think you're confused. I'm the nurse." <laughs> And I, I love that story <laughs> because that's really, you know, each of them was to support the other. I mean, he, he was also an important person. But being confident, yeah. comfortable yes. in who you are also yeah. makes it possible for you to properly support other people who matter yeah. to you. Definitely. And that is so important because one of the reasons and culturally and especially here in Africa, Angola, one of the reasons why women won't um, accept also leadership roles is because of that lack of support, of having a husband that is behind them a formal husband or informal husband that's not the question to have to have that support behind and um and not being afraid that the women can have a, a better salary or have a better uh role because if you are in, in if you are a family and if you are together that that doesn't has that is a plus okay that's good because we are a family. We are together. If you are in in the role better than me, if I'm if I'm a man that I'm at home taking care of kids, that's okay. But culturally, once again, that is not allowed, especially here. And probably you have different uh, stories, but it's still one of the reasons you have a very high a very high uh, rate of. Uh, pregnancies in the adolescence very very high he here, and once you have kids, and then the 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 the, the boy will disappear because it's uh, the girl problem. Mm. So mm. all that we still have to educate women's, men's, father, parents. Uh, in order to have a different alignment in the future because a baby is made by two, right? So both are equal, uh, responsible for that. Um, when Once again, when you are in a role, leadership and sea level, uh, for example, you have to have the support because otherwise you are not going to fit on it and you are going to be alone. So these are still the struggles that we still have. And the only way is if we are together, not apart or saying I'm better than you, because this speech won't take us any, 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 any place. Mm. I don't know what you think and what is your experience, especially because um, the realities of our world at the same time are so different that some of these things, I, I believe they will also, uh, you also met them, but it's here, it's more, it's more, Mark. you know, like it's like I, it's normal. Here is the normality, there it's not normal. What do you think? All I can do is to, to agree with the, the situation. Here, here in, um, we like to think it's much better here, but I'm not convinced. Um, we have a number of women who end up at the United Nations or in one of the multinationals and such, and they have the husband who, who is the trailing spouse 
or who has um, or is in IT or something where he's able to do it no matter where he is. And they actually, there's a foundation here to, to bring the international organizations, multinationals closer to the local um, community. And they started a special group for men who were here as trailing spouses because there's nothing for them. <laughs> uh, the other men are working and, and so on. And I found it very interesting that there were there would be enough of them to actually bring a group together. Do you know, I think a lot of what we're talking about as far as, you know, the, the role that men and women play, we have so much yet to do with our, our little ones and with, uh, with young people. Something that I began doing, I have two, two granddaughters who I often take places with me and I'm constantly introducing them to, to friends. And we were at a, a special event for the fireworks <laughs> to, to see it from somebody's office. And there were all these people and I started introducing them. And then I thought, Bonnie, you have been missing out. I'm introducing them as my friends. I need to introduce them as the owner of this company. I need to introduce them as the president of the board of. I need to introduce them in a way that they know they're my friends and that, I mean, they're having natural conversations with them. But I also need to be expressing what these women are also doing professionally because it's not something oh, I was normally doing. And the first time I did that, when we left the party, the little one who was probably nine at the time looks up at me and she says, wow, you have important friends. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, I do. So nice. <laughs> no, they're my friends, so that's not how I've been introducing them. But I'd, I'd, I'd leave that as maybe just a little challenge to others too. Um, let's start emphasizing what some of our friends do. And I think we're, as women, we're also not so good about tooting our own horn. Um, it's easier for me to, to promote you and you to promote me than each of us perhaps to promote ourselves. And I think that's something we need to learn to do, not, not to brag, but for others to know. Others need to know what we're doing because we are transforming the world one woman at a time. Just the way people show up. Can I, can I share a, a, a quick um, little story? One of, one of my sisters was in the Peace Corps and she was in this little village in it, it, near Itarusu, um, Brazil. Uh, I don't know, a half, half day bus ride, two day bus ride away from any civilization. When she was there, there was this little girl that would always come and she wanted to, to sweep out her hut for her because she wanted her to take her back to America when she went. Well, obviously she couldn't take this little girl. She never forgot her though. 30 some years later, maybe even 40 years later, my sister and her husband went to visit Brazil and they went to this little village. And the village had a party for them. I mean, because they remembered her. She was, she was the one that had taught most of them um, the, the English language. This very stunning young woman comes up to her. I, I really get emotional about this because it's such a good image. This stunning young woman walks up to her and she says, you may not remember me, but I'm the little girl that used to sweep your, door, your doorstep and your hut for you. And every time you walk down the street, I said, I'm going to walk like that. And she said, and I do. And I'm now the head teacher here at the school. <laughs> and, and 
I love that because we don't need to be leading with words. We don't need to be even pretending to lead. We're role models in everything we do. And when we're authentic in the way we walk down the street, who's to say what influence that is having on somebody else? And there's something about walking with confidence that gives you confidence. So um, I don't usually say that's my sister, but it is. And I'm very proud of her for numerous reasons. <laughs> As so I am. Sorry. Oh, oh, so lovely. I, I, I'm, I, I would stay here with you like more three or four hours. You know that I love <laughs> with you. <laughs> I really love to talk with you. And that's why, I, oh, it was so nice um, to have this conversation. So, yes, Bonnie, we are almost at the end of our conversation. But before that, mm -hmm. I want you to, you already have shared your book. So, please, if you want to know a little more, more about Bonnie's book, visit Amazon. It's there. It's, um, it's really amazing. But what other books you'd like or book or a, a movie or a film you'd like to share with us and, and why? You know, I was, I was thinking the other day, I rarely read a book more than once. But there's one book that I read, oh, I think when I was maybe a late teenager that has, has really marked me. It's one of those books I've held on to. It's called Christy, and it's by Catherine Marshall. And what spellbound me about this book, I mean, it's a beautiful story. Um, it has romance and, and such in it. But what really... I guess captured me about this book was it was about a, a young woman who went to work in the hillbilly country of the US, which is the area where people at that time had not had schooling. They had one doctor for probably 100, 200 square miles. And it was my first exposure to something where the culture of the, the people was so different and I wanted to be a part of it. I realized then that I wanted, no matter what I did, I had to be of service. It had to be something that would be making a difference in, in others' lives. And it had to have a little bit of, um, uh, what should we call it, uh, spark, um, fun, um, discovery, challenge, all of that. And it's, a, it, it, it's just one of those stories that captured me. The other one that really um, is, I think, one of the best books I ever read, and I think it's 33 pages, was called Living the Life by um, Elvira Bluefield. And that was my grandmother, Jenny Elvira Bluefield. And it's because through simple stories, she made you understand certain lessons in life. I mean, and, and, and there are such beautiful stories. For instance, there's a story where she's shopping for a new hat and she happens to be shopping with my mom, who was then a young, a young, young woman or girl. And she tried on a hat, it was too expensive, but it's really the one she liked best. And my mom said to her, but mom, that does something for you. And she said, so I got it. And ever thereafter, I only purchased what did something for me. And it, it's such a lesson somehow. In other words, that's part of this authenticity. Yep. What does something for you, not because somebody else thinks that would be what you should be wearing as whoever you are. So those, uh, that book, I, I, I've carried through life with me. <laughs> oh, that's so lovely. Oh, 
So, so lovely, 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 Bonnie. Thank you for sharing that. Eva Rosa, I would like very much to be able to offer to your listeners um, to receive my daily messages. Uh, every day, I, I believe you subscribe to it, there's yeah. either a short video message or um, a picture with a yeah. message. Yeah. doesn't take long to read. It's just a pick-me-up to kind of ignite, if you wish, that fire in your belly. And if, if for anybody who's interested, it is just go to a fire in your belly. No, in her belly, sorry, a fire in her belly dot com. And a page will open for you to simply put in your, your first name and your email. You can unsubscribe anytime you want. It's not selling things. It really is to just pick you up on a day to day. And I'd love for you, for you to have that opportunity. I will ask also to pass here the, the link so I, i'm already i already subscribed so <laughs> <laughs> i know you do <laughs> and sometimes i ha i share some of the your your stories uh, with some friends or groups or um because they are a daily motivation also and it, it's sometimes uh, we have days that are more difficult than others and that can be a very it, sometimes i do not see it in the morning to be honest i see it during the day but it's a moment where okay let me see what i have today to learn mm -hmm. and that is the way i see it so thank you bonnie for sharing your your thoughts your stories your mm -hmm. knowledge with us so i'm very 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 oh i i like you very much so <laughs> well, that's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have here Olga Gonçalves. That was the person that has put it, us together. So thank you, Olga, for being here. And thank you all, Gisela, um, I all. Uh, I know that Graça, some of the messages didn't pass away. Graça, uh, Imaginário, Gloria Aguas, um, and all that uh, have been... Um, watching this conversation with us. So thank you for being there. But before, before we leave, I'd like to share a little what I have taken um, from our today conversation. So can I do that, Bonnie? Can I share it with everyone? <laughs> <laughs> so let me share a little of what I take. So we are in our 101 conversation, a special conversation in English, as you already saw. So this, this was our second edition in English. So it's nice also to bring other cultures, other ways of thinking. And Bonnie, it was an example of that from the beginning until the end of this conversation. Um, and what I take today from our um, leadership conversation. So, Bonnie Fatio, I'm a barefoot boy, blonde. I was always very privileged. Yes, we were humble, but we had values as a family, ethics, respect. And since my father was a minister, we have moved every four years from one side to the other. And that was natural to me to be a part of the community. And if one day I was uh, helping my father delivering food for the need, the other moment I was dressing, being dressed to see the mayor. And that was one way of um, be and connected with the community. My father was one of the di distinguished leaders, his values, his ethics, and at the age of 10, I was already babysitting. So I was feeling so responsible for doing that. I had been working all my life and trying to understand. Even when I was in uh, the university, I did all kinds of jobs in order to pay my studies. And they have fulfilled me and they have 
bringing and adding value for the women that I'm also today. And when I met my hubby in the second junior year, I decided to move also to Swiss, Switzerland, Switzerland, Swiss Geneva. Yes, we got married two years after, and that was incredible because what attracted me was the language, the culture. I didn't know nothing of that, but even though I went and I moved, Geneva, it's a land of opportunities. It has this diversity, especially because of international companies such as UN, but also because of the power of all the power of the local community. So it was an open door for understanding, learning. But I am very spontaneous and that made me the difference to stood out. And I have always stood out because the way I am and see things. And that allowed me also and took me to the leadership positions that I had and have. And therefore, I also met role models. And these leaders that I admired, what I saw was goodness. Mm -hmm. Bonnie brought this word, goodness, values, ethic, by showing how can be done. Not just by saying, but showing. And also my parents, my father and my mother, they also have these um, leadership uh, roles that I really uh, admire. And for me, for Bonnie, authentic feminine leadership, this goodness, this help to bring fit, not fit in a mold, but expanding, opening, understanding, and that brings us to the conversation, why and how Bonnie Fatu has created Inspire Woman Lead in 2016. A vision of a world of peace and collaboration with values. And we women, we must have women leading in all areas of the globe. And leading with authenticity, leading and taking the most wonderful that we have in the world today and taking that and bringing along to the world again and to trying to be harmonious. Women of different countries, women cross board, women from sexual, uh, different across sexu sec sectorial, women from cross generation, women from all over the world, the globe. These make us feel the most important thing because sometimes when you are being mentored for someone from other country or with other culture, you just think, okay, I had this bias, but it's not worthy. So by being mentoring women from someone so different, will finally discover those hidden bias. Working with women all over the world, it's a privilege that we have, we have here in Inspire Women Lead. And congratulations, Bonnie, for continuing transforming one woman at a time. Because this process, it's one year, it's one year uh, mentor program, Six months you'll be a mentee, six months you'll be a mentor. And I have still the privilege of being one of the trainees for the mentors. We have a program behind. It's not just a conversation, as Bonnie said, that we are doing here today. No, it has a program very well established. And then our conversa conversation went about spontaneous, spontaneous, sp oh, spontaneous, to be spontaneous, to be about feeling good about ourselves, showing to be comfortable, showing our feminine side, like Bonnie with her scarf, lovely scarf, Inspire Woman Lead, <laughs> her blue, and here I am with my greens. So when we are 
feeling comfortable with ourselves. We do not think what others will think. So please think on that. Believe in yourself. Believe what you have inside of you. And as an author also, Bonnie has wrote a book, Fire in Her Belly. Once again, transforming one woman at a time. Bringing that vision. Bringing what, what is in your belly. What makes you move? What makes you fire? And that is absolutely amazing because you have so different kind of stories. But what is your fire? What is in your belly? You can find the book in Amazon. So, parenthesis. And I also share the mission about um, female leadership in Angola, why we give and we raise women voices, why it's so important to be with um role models to inspire other women, other men, in order to have a more uh, gender equity world. So this feminine, we have been talking a little about identifying, showing, bringing, feel, and when we feel good about ourselves, we'll feel, uh, we will also bring that to the others. And feel the and the others will be feeling much better. Um, Bonnie has shared several stories, so they are all amazing. So please go listen if you haven't, <laughs> and if you are just entering now, we had lovely stories. But one of them was when Bonnie said that she has two granddaughters, and then she took her granddaughters to. Uh, to an event and she was saying my friend she does that and do that and but then suddenly she said no she's my friend but she's also the president of she is also the that professional she holds she's also the owner of that company and then the way the granddaughter saw it was wow you have so amazing important friends and she has bringing this, expressing this side. What can we do? How can we fight in facing what our friends, what they are as leaders, how can we promote them? But also do not forget, promote yourself. Because sometimes we just forget that. It's easier to promote other one, but not ourselves. And if you are transforming one home, one woman at a time. It's so important to do that. We are role models in everything we do. So walk in confidence, you are confident. For the books, uh, Bonnie has brought us two books, Christy. And it was the first book where she saw this amazing difference, the cultural part, and she wanted to do part of it. It's about a woman that went to a very, to, to work in a place where there was nothing. And that difference started there. She was very young when she started to read it. That spark, that freedom, that discovery, that challenge her. And also, a, a book wrote by her grandmother, Living the Life, a small book from Jenny Blue, Bluefield. Hope I have spelled it correctly. And with simple stories, with these simple stories, she made us the importance of life and also doing for yourself. Do something for yourself and brings me always lessons and authenticity. So this, this is what I take today from our conversation with Bonnie Fatio. Bonnie, before <laughs> we leave. You're amazing. <laughs> uh, to, to have been able to keep track of all of that. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. So any any final um, message, remarks you'd like to, um, to do? 
simply if anybody is interested in inspiredwomenlead.org, please go on the website and it is a free program so that um, nobody, nobody is going to be refused uh, due to any finance. It's absolutely, absolutely free. It yes. comes with a 12 month commitment, however, and that is serious. Yes. So, yes. Because and thank, thank you so much. <laughs> I, I have just thoroughly enjoyed this time with you today, Eva Rosa. Well, it's always a pleasure, Bonnie. And thank you for having accepted our invitation to be here with us in uh, female leadership in Angola, uh, where we want to raise women's voices, bring stories, real stories of life. So thank you very much, Bonnie, for joining us. So for today, this is it. Our conversation uh, with Bonnie, I want to thank you all for being here with us and we'll have another amazing conversation next week. We are almost at the end of the month, uh, the, the year, not the month, but the year, almost at the end of the year. So I will wait for, for everyone with us to join us. And if you do not follow us, it's our invitation to follow us here in LinkedIn or YouTube or Instagram. It's easy. It's in Portuguese. Yes, it's true. Liderança Feminina in Angola. But it's possible to, to have information also in English. So, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you all. It was an immense pleasure uh, once again. Beijinhos. Bye-bye. Obrigada. Lots of love. <laughs>